Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod's Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we embark on an ancient story that will bring us to Jerusalem, where we will follow the life of King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to relax and find comfort in this space that we are in, here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the mattress beneath you. Feel the cozy weight of the blankets on top of you and the plush softness of the mattress underneath you as it cradles your body. Right now, there are no obligations. There is no to-do list. By simply lying there, relaxing and listening to the sound of my voice, you are starting to rest. With your eyes closed, try and imagine the feeling of the sun on your skin. Feel the warmth of the gentle rays as they wash over your face. Feel its warmth relaxing the muscles around your eyes and your lips. Feel your shoulders gradually fall away from your ears, giving you more space, comfort, and length there. Notice how the sun sinks through your skin, washing away any troubles or tension that are carrying inside your head. No matter where we may find ourselves, and no matter how we are feeling, the sun will always be there to come around and provide us with warmth, nourishment, and the promises that things will be okay. Feel the warmth of the sun rays travel down from your face, washing over your torso now. As those golden rays brush over your chest, turn your attention to how your heart and your lungs feel. If your heart is beating fast or a little too hard, that's okay. Together, we can change that. Imagine those rays of light sinking into your chest and enveloping your heart is a blanket of warmth and comfort. Feel that positive, calming energy radiate from your chest. And then, focus on your lungs. Are you taking deep, long breaths? Imagine for a moment that the air around you is also sparkling with that sunshine. As you breathe in the sunshine, it fills your lungs and your chest, relaxing you more and more. Gradually slow your breath as you breathe in and relish every drop of that glorious golden glow. Stay here for a few minutes. We're in no rush here. Simply enjoy the feeling of that sunlight on your chest 
and in your body. The light is around you, and you are, indeed, the light. Notice the light as it travels down to your legs, hips, and hands. The beams of sunshine tap lightly against your hands, urging you to unfurl them if you're holding them in fists or holding them taut at all. Now is a time where your hands can relax and just be. There is no need for tension there. Your legs melt into the mattress beneath you with warmth. Any tension or pressure they've been carrying after this long day are slowly released with the help of that wonderful light. Feel as your legs sink deeper and deeper into the mattress beneath you. And now, you feel the light over your whole body and your head and face, your torso, lungs, and heart, your hands, your legs and feet. You are truly engulfed in its warmth and positivity, its calm, its peace. Now that we have taken the time to relax and find comfort in the space that we are in, here and now, let us begin our story. Long before King Solomon was the ruler of the united monarchy of Israel and Judah, his father, David sat upon the throne. But before King David became a king, he was nothing but a shepherd and musician. He spent most of his days out in the hills of the kingdom, tending to his flock of sheep and watching as the days drifted on by around him. Most days, he found himself sitting at the base of a great, beautiful tree. The branches curved and reached up for the sky, as if they were trying to brush their leaves against the heavens themselves. The birds chirped in the leaves, giving David a soundscape for his day alone with the sheep. In fact, that was not the only noise in the symphony around him. The leaves rustled in the fragrant flower-tinged breeze. The babbling brook nearby sang into the air as the water glided over rocks and branches and great curves in the earth. And with these sounds all around him, David would play his beloved lyre all alone, out in the wilderness, he could weave songs unlike anything the world had seen. He loved the vibrant chimes of his instrument as he strummed it, humming along without a care. Out in the wilderness with his flock and his music, he was at total peace. For quite some time, 
that was David's life. But the world at the time was young and in an ever-changing motion. When war broke out between Israel and the Philistine army, all the men were called to the front lines. Goliath, a giant of a man that stood at nine feet tall, led the Philistine army against Israel. He was such a force that the army was afraid of him. Goliath mocked Israel and their God, which greatly upset David. He talked to the king of Israel at the time, Saul, and convinced him to let him go fight on the front lines. Saul agreed, though he had no faith in David whatsoever, and he had even less when he learned that David wasn't going to wear any of the king's armor when he went to face Goliath. Instead of facing Goliath with traditional weapons, David stood before him with a staff, sling, and five stones and his unwavering faith in God. He told Goliath that though he came with no sword or spear, he had arrived with something even more powerful. He came in the name of the Lord Almighty. David hurls a stone from his sling and hits Goliath right in his forehead. With ease, he knocked Goliath out, defeating him. News of David's bravery and faith in God spread across Israel like wildfire. King Saul found himself incredibly jealous of David, and that jealousy would only increase with time, forcing David to go into hiding for a few years. After King Saul is killed in battle against the Philistines, David is anointed king over all of Israel and Judah. Soon after, he conquers the city of Jerusalem, makes it Israel's capital, and takes the Ark of the Covenant into the city to be the center point of worship. Unfortunately, though King David was beloved by his people, his rule was not a time of peace, since the kingdom of Israel was frequently at war. But there were some moments of beauty and happiness in Israel and in Jerusalem at the time. David cared for his kingdom greatly. Many nights, he would wander the streets of Jerusalem, thinking of ways that he could care for his people even more, thinking of ways that he could bring peace to his land. These walks reminded him of his days as a shepherd. When he walked the streets, he was almost always alone. He could listen to the click, click of his shoes echo through the cobblestone streets 
and hear the crunch of fallen leaves beneath his feet. He could listen to the gentle whoosh of the soft grass fluttering in the breeze and the sound of fragrant flower petals twirling as crickets leapt from flower to flower. The crickets chirping and the frogs peeping radiated into the cool night air, filling it all with a sense of calm. But on one of those nights he heard something strange. He heard the sound of water washing over someone's skin. David found it odd that there was someone else out this time of night. He looked down at one of the rooftops, and that's when he saw her, Bathsheba. Immediately upon seeing her, he became breathless. She was the most beautiful woman he had laid eyes on, bathed in the silvery glow of the full moon on a rooftop terrace. From the moment he saw her, he knew that he had to love her, cherish her, and be with her. Eventually, he did marry Bathsheba, though they first had to endure a fair share of strife and commit sin. Once they were absolved of that, Bathsheba gave birth to a little boy named Solomon. Solomon had a happy upbringing with his siblings in the beautiful land of Israel. Once he became a man, his father became too old to rule. There was much discussion about who was going to inherit the throne. Solomon's older half-brother, Adonijah, was presumed to be the future ruler of Israel, as he was the heir apparent to the throne. But one day, the prophet Nathan and Bathsheba convinced David to proclaim Solomon king instead of Adonijah, which greatly angered Adonijah. Following the instructions of his father, Solomon began a purge of the kingdom, getting rid of corrupt people in power and assuring that his rule would be stable and just. A boy of just fifteen, Solomon ruled with a warmth and kindness that his brothers did not possess. But there was one thing young Solomon was lacking, and that was wisdom. He knew that he had been anointed as king early in his life and that made him concerned for his kingdom. He tried to rule with fairness and acumen, but there are some things that only come with experience. He leaned on others for guidance and help, but most of all, he leaned on his Lord and Savior. One night, Solomon found himself struggling to fall asleep. He lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, thinking of the kingdom and its people. He thought of the children he saw playing on the hillsides, of their giggles echoing through the rows of cypress trees as they rolled in the tall, sweet grass. He thought 
of the young couples he saw sitting by the river in the light of the setting sun, of the whispers they exchanged, dreaming of the life that lay ahead of them. They talked of their future, of the home they would settle in, the children they would have, the countryside that they would explore. And he thought of the elderly, the wisest people in all of Israel, the people who sat in the shade of trees and ate their sweet foods and watched the world move around them with a smile. All of those people were people he had to protect, people he wanted to care for. With them on his mind, he rose up out of bed and walked to the balcony of his palace. When he stepped out into the night air, a chill ran down his spine. It smelled of distant forests and mountains and plains, of the beauty of the countryside, all swept into the bustling little city for him to enjoy. But that wasn't all. There was a small pond just below his window, and in it he swore he could see the whole world at peace. He stared down at the glassy surface for quite some time. It was truly a celestial mirror, reflecting the stars in the sky, each and every one back at him. They twinkled in the water like a million gemstones, though he knew in his heart their beauty was worth more than all the gemstones on earth. And then there was the moon, that perfect, beautiful moon, the same moon under which his father had fallen in love with his mother. Only now, that moon was illuminating the lawn and the pond behind his home in its silvery light. Everything seemed to move slower and more intently at night. The grass swaying in the breeze, the cypress trees swaying and bending as they made their way down toward the ground, then up to that inky black sky. Solomon felt like he was being cleansed by the light of the moon. In the power and brilliant energy of nature, he felt humbled. He felt connected to God. He closed his eyes for a moment, soaking in the light of the moon on his skin. He truly listened to the sounds around him, to the rhythm of nature's music. He could hear the gentle chirping of crickets hiding in the grass far below him weaving their way through a great green world. He could hear the frogs in the pond as they rested on the muddy edges and then leapt into the water, leaving ringlets on the surface of the water in their wake. He heard the cicadas meandering their way up trees in the far distance, reminding him that summer was, indeed, one of the best times to be alive. He took 
a few more deep breaths of the night air, smelling the fragrance of those trees in his nose, tasting the earth and the loam and the promise of the land in his kingdom. It made him feel even more fulfilled, for in that moment, he knew that his people had everything they needed to survive. But there was one thing they could certainly use. Solomon decided it was time to try to sleep again, now that he was once more connected to the earth. Now that he was once more at peace within himself and had hope for his kingdom, he lay down on his plush sheets and closed his eyes as he rolled over in bed. Candles safely flickered in sconces along the walls, tended by his loyal servants. Slowly, in the light of those calmly flickering candles, Solomon began to drift asleep. He felt the drowsiness creep up over his body, like a friend warming him up with a blanket and welcoming him to just relax. The weight of the world drifted away from him, but this night of rest was not an ordinary night of rest. For when he fell asleep, there was someone waiting for him in his dreams. When Solomon opened his eyes in his dream, God was standing before him with kind eyes. He did not have to say anything, did not have to introduce himself. Solomon could feel his grace and warmth and love by simply standing in the same space with him. Solomon was not afraid. He looked up at his God in awe and appreciation, and God offered him a smile. He told Solomon that he had been loyal and trusting in the Lord, and as a result, he wanted to offer Solomon something to help him rule his kingdom. He offered to give Solomon anything in the world his heart desired. There were a million things he could have asked for. He could have asked for the most beautiful wife. He could have asked for his weight in gold. He could have asked to rule the entire earth for that matter. He could have wanted more power and money than the world had ever seen. But Solomon knew that was not what he wanted, and not what his beloved kingdom needed. Instead, he bowed before God. As gratefully as he could, he asked God to grant him wisdom. God was surprised. Wisdom? That is what you seek? He asked, his voice gentle and calm. Solomon nodded, telling God that he would be incredibly thankful for such a blessing from the Lord. God smiled upon him and told him, I grant you a wise and discerning mind. There has never been anyone like you before. 
nor will anyone like you arise again. Soon after those words left God's lips, Solomon found himself staring at the ceiling of his room. Sun just broke over the horizon, casting rays of golden and pink light across his blankets in brilliant splashes of color. He blinked himself awake, shaking off the haze and glory of the dream he had just had. He had gone to bed a fifteen-year-old boy, inexperienced, unaware of many things about the world, but with a heart of gold. But now, now he understood everything perfectly. He was wise, and with his wisdom came a sense of calm. When he entered his palace for the day, it was undeniable to everyone nearby that there was something different about Solomon. He walked through the halls carrying an air of serenity with him, and with that serenity came something else, the sense that he was in total and complete control, that he could handle any situation, anything the world threw at their kingdom. The people in the palace realized that they had a true ruler now, not just a man with a heart of gold, but a man who understood the universe better than any of them could. Instantly, any stress the people in the castle were carrying melted away. No matter what was going on out in the world, they felt safe because they knew their leader would protect them without having to lift a single weapon. Soon after, news of Solomon's wisdom spread quickly through the kingdom. People involved in long-standing conflicts came to the palace, seeking wise resolutions. Perhaps the most famous of all of Solomon's stories was that of two women who came to the palace, each claiming that they were the mother of a young child. Solomon sat on his throne as they entered the room. Both of them were in tears, and they carried a sense of turmoil with them. But Solomon was not affected by this. Rather, he was able to easily breathe in it and release it, knowing this energy was not his to carry knowing he could settle with ease the heavy emotions the two women were carrying. Both women gave their side of the story, proclaiming that the child was theirs. At the end, Solomon could only smile at the two women. He proposed that the fairest thing to do was to give each woman half of the child. One of the women accepted his answer, telling him it did seem the fairest. But the other woman protested in tears, telling Solomon that she would rather give up the child than see it killed. And that is how I know it is your child, Solomon replied. He handed the woman her child 
and sent her on her way with a smile. News of this decision and the king's moment of wisdom spread fast through the kingdom. When all Israel heard the decision that the king had rendered, they stood in awe of the king, for they saw that he possessed divine wisdom to execute justice. Of course, Solomon worshipped God even more fervently after he granted him wisdom. He decided to build a temple to God in Jerusalem. He sent his people to Lebanon to procure cypress wood and cedar wood and stone from the most beautiful quarries. Hauling the expensive, luxurious building materials was not an easy task, but it was a task that Solomon assured everyone was something God deserved. The temple took seven full years to complete, and every step of the way, Solomon stopped in to marvel at the work that was being done. The interior of the building was overlaid with fine gold and there were intricate carvings throughout every single room. Many people of Jerusalem went there to worship, and for that, Solomon was grateful. In time, rumors of Solomon's benevolence spread throughout the world. When whispers reached the palace of the Queen of Sheba, she was intrigued. For quite some time, she was known as one of the wisest rulers in the area. And hearing of Solomon's greatness left her with several questions. Determined to get to the bottom of things and see how truly wise Solomon was, she decided to travel all the way to Jerusalem and test his intelligence and wit for herself. The journey was long but beautiful. The queen had found herself looking out over the landscape as she made her way to Jerusalem in awe. She loved the sights of the rolling hills, of trees lining the road, of the stunning blue skies that always seemed to be hovering just overhead. And the queen was not traversing this alone. She had a caravan with her, and that caravan carried many chests with gold and other untold riches. She had dozens of camels, each carrying spices, gold, and precious stones, all gifts meant for the wise King Solomon. If he proved himself to truly be wise, that is. When the Queen of Sheba arrived in Jerusalem, she gazed around the city in wonder. It must have been one of the finest cities in existence. There were many new buildings, and the old ones were painstakingly cared for. The streets were clean and full of happy, cheerful people who smiled and bowed as she passed. There was no arguing, no violence, no yelling here. There was simply peace. Upon entering King Solomon's palace, the Queen of Sheba was even more surprised. It was, without a doubt, the most 
dazzling palace she had ever seen in her entire life. The walls were awash in stunning paint. The interior was lined with bronze and gold fixtures that glistened in the light bleeding in through the tall windows. And in the center of all this glory was none other than King Solomon. When the queen laid eyes on him, she was so stunned she couldn't say a word. The kindness and worldliness he possessed seemed to radiate from him, enveloping everyone around him in its strength. King Solomon smiled down on the queen. He rose from his throne and took her gently by the hand, introducing himself. Though everyone knew the introduction was hardly necessary. At his touch, the Queen of Sheba found words had escaped her even more than she could have imagined for a brief moment. But then she remembered why she had come. King Solomon was supposed to be the wisest, the most powerful, and to prove it, she needed him to answer some questions. She sat in front of him for the majority of the day. As the sun arched over the sky, painting the room in varying rays of light, she asked him questions. The riddles she gave him were riddles that she had never heard another person answer. Few had even gotten remotely close to answering them. And yet, with each and every one, King Solomon was able to provide an answer in mere seconds. He never missed a beat, and he never stopped smiling the entire time. By the time the sun began to set, over the kingdom. The queen knew that the rumors she had heard were actually the truth. King Solomon was the wisest man on earth, the wisest man who had ever lived and would ever live. She beckoned to her servants to give King Solomon the gifts she had brought from her kingdom. King Solomon accepted each and every bit of gold, every pot of spice, and every precious jewel with sincere gratitude. And then he returned the favor to the Queen of Sheba. He gave her jewelry, bronze, and other riches from his kingdom earning her gratitude. But it wasn't the gifts she was most thankful for. It was the time she spent with King Solomon, the time she spent learning from him, the time she was able to spend trying to understand him, and the mutual connection that gradually strengthened between the two. It wasn't often that she felt she was having a conversation with someone that she truly felt understood by. And King Solomon was just that. As she rode away into the setting sun, heading home, she couldn't help but look over Jerusalem with a smile. It was a truly beautiful city with a truly wise king. She thought of all the people in the buildings, 
the young children getting tucked into bed, the young couples sitting by the riverside, the elderly people sleeping in the light of the moon. And she couldn't help but think about how safe they were with Solomon as their leader. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story and it has provided you with a night of restful, relaxing sleep. Please, feel free to join us again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.